We'll be back with another one, y'all. I'm more consistent. But as y'all see, it's a sub in the in the center, in the corner of the channel, man. Sub to the channel. Got some more controversial stuff coming up. Let's get into it. Sub to the channel. I, I want to keep this conversation going about where the medical industry is headed, the idea of helping people, where it could possibly end, how slippery is the slope. I asked you earlier, I asked, what do you think about the IVF and the surrogacy programs that we have? Um, and I asked you that question, you're probably thinking, so what, big deal? I don't I can ever be with a woman that doesn't want to physically have my child. I think that's a cop all this some like some some witchcraft. As they would say like back in the day. That's crazy. Surrogates. Not even a child really. You know, families uh need help. There are people that struggle through infertility, all things that I thought. And I had to reconsider and start thinking more thoroughly about this topic when Something happened in conservative land, if you will, amongst conservative commentators. Um, there was a bit of an issue when Dave Rubin, if you're not familiar with him, he has a political show on YouTube, and David Janet, that is his husband, announced that they were having two children. You might recall this. They announced on Instagram, they held up a picture of the two ultrasounds and said that they were going to have two boys. And surprisingly, this created a tremor. And people began commenting that this was ungodly, this was wrong, this was backwards. Uh, a lot of commentators weighed in, particularly I remember Ali Beth Stuckley, Beth Stuckey talking about how surrogates suffer and how this was anti-family. That I ain't even gonna lie, I feel like that's wrong to me. It wasn't Ali Stuckey's words, it was other people. How do y'all feel? Put it in the comments. Well, that were in the comments saying that this concept of two gay men choosing to have a surrogate and to have a child was wrong. And I was asked at that time to offer my commentary and I didn't because first and foremost, I felt that we were using these two individuals as a conduit to a more important discussion. Like we were just sort of saying, you two did this and now we're all gonna yell about it. And by the way, the babies were already being born, right? The baby, they were already announced the pregnancy and there's something that felt wrong to me about attacking these two children like i mean i i love life i can't imagine these kids growing up and seeing that their birth announcement went so side i think more on the search though i think it's more on the way having these children like that feel like that's weird to me you're just gonna enter two gay men so that are together so when you have the child are you just gonna give the child to them and not be the mother i don't i don't know i don't know how it works it's, it's, it's crazy it's like witchcraft to me Ways and I was obviously especially sympathetic because at the time I was pregnant too. And when I announced, obviously people applauded and were so happy for me. And I, I felt sad for Dave Rubin and David Janet that they did not have that same celebratory reaction from people. And I thought we should not be, we should have this discussion, but we shouldn't be using Dave Rubin and David Janet's birth announcement as a conduit. Now I'm ready to have this discussion because it did get me thinking about how little I knew about surrogacy and how little I knew about IVF. So personally, for me, um, I know two couples that tried to have children seriously for almost a decade and just could not get pregnant. I'm talking about heterosexual couples and all they wanted was to have one child. And they turned to IVF, the women held the children themselves and they gave birth to them. Now they had complications in each of those births, which maybe is something that happens more often uh, when you use IVF. But the point being is that this, their children were a tremendous gift to them, right? They resorted to IVF because they could not have children. And I think that in my head, I always sort of assumed that that was the reason that you have, that the majority of people were doing their best and trying to have children and yet they were infertile for whatever reason and so they turned to science and i thought in my head that this is a great scientific breakthrough to help people give birth but then uh some other couples the conversations that i was having about their reasons for turning to ivf or their reasons for turning to surrogacy i would say i don't want to say it was evil or but i would say that it was it struck me as odd the conversations that i was having so one woman was pregnant. This was over in England. 
and they had gotten pregnant naturally and they were having a boy. And she said to me just so casually over dinner, you know, next time I will probably go to America and get IVF so I can make sure we have a girl. And I went, what? Why, why would you, first off, why would you travel to America? You're here in the UK and to have a girl, what are you talking about? And she said, That's weird. Like, you're supposed to be thankful for whatever you get. It's a blessing. No matter what you get, it's a blessing. You're bringing life into this world. You're bringing the next geniuses, the next, the next inventors, the next doctors, the next um, scientists. That's crazy. Said, oh, America has like the most open policies about IVF. You can pick what gender the child is. You're not allowed to do that here in the, in the United Kingdom. And I was like, oh, I didn't know this. If you're listening to this, you probably didn't know this either. That in America, you can obviously pick whether or not you're going to have a boy or a girl. They don't do that. They find that to be immoral um, in other places like the United Kingdom. So you don't get to decide that. So for her, she was going to go do IVF because she wanted to ensure that she had one child from each sex. How do you feel about that? I'm asking you, I'm not providing an answer because I don't really, I don't have a conclusion to all of this. It is an ongoing discussion that I think that we should have, right? Another person was telling me about their IVF experience and they told me that they grade the embryos. So after they put together the sperm and the egg, obviously it creates an embryo and the doctor will tell you, well, we recommend you implant this one because this one's an A and this one's going to be a B. So this boy one that we created is maybe a B and this girl one is an A. Which one do you want to implant? And this one definitely could potentially have problems. That's a C. Again, I offer no commentary. I just, I think that's something that I didn't know and maybe you didn't know. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Is it, does that remove something from the process? I, I, I don't know how I feel about that, right? I once saw a couple, and this is regarding surrogacy, and they were looking for an egg donor, and they were using a company that had created an app where they could look at women that were willing to donate the egg, and they could look at their stats, so to speak. It was almost like looking like football stats, so you could see <laughs> almost football like Football stats? I'm dead. Like a Tinder app. This egg donor goes to Harvard. She has a 3.7 GPA. She, you are fundamentally wrong in on your that. opinion. No, I'm, it's not. Okay. Opinion. She played volleyball in high school and there was a picture, pictures of the potential egg donor. And I was watching this couple look at her and sort of, oh, her eyes are too wide. Oh, too far apart. Oh, her nose is too big. Yeah, swipe, like literally swipe. Let's look at the next one. Oh, I really love that this one played volleyball. That probably means that she's got an athletic egg. That's good. Um, mm, yeah, but I don't really like that she got, you know, she has 2.9. I don't like that she didn't go to university at all. Swipe, swipe, swipe. How do you feel about that? I, don't, I can't explain. I felt weird about it. it. Something about it felt weird. I can't really put it into words. So I'm asking you how you feel about that. Over and over again, we also see examples in the mainstream media of celebrities that are turning to IVF and turning to surrogacy, not for those earlier reasons that I highlighted, right? There's not, oh, we're really just trying to have a child. We've been trying for 10 years and this would be a gift from God. I mean, I literally know a couple that had to refinance their entire home for IVF. I mean, they were desperate for this child, but in these more cultural examples in Hollywood, you have people like Priyanka Chopra, I think I'm saying her last name right, Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas, who openly said that they turned to IVF because they just couldn't get their schedules lined up. They were too busy. And when they realized her... What the fuck? Oh, this is the Indian woman right here. Oh, she's bad. Don't tell her though. But that sounds crazy. You don't have the time to have intimate sex with your with your loved one. That's that sounds crazy. Like I don't fertility schedule. The days that she would be fertile, and maybe days that he was shooting a music video or he was busy, it just didn't line up. So they turned to surrogacy. They got somebody else pregnant because they couldn't make the time to come together as a couple during the days that she was fertile. How do you feel about that? How do you feel when it becomes sort of weird. a luxury 
of wealthy people that don't have the time uh, to come together like a normal couple and become pregnant. How do you feel about that? The same can be said, obviously, the Kardashians have been very vocal. We know that Kim Kardashian, even though she, I think she had two kids. Yes, she had two kids. And to be fair, she had bad pregnancies. It was very publicized that she had various issues with her first two pregnancies. The point I'm making here is that she had two children, Kim. Because she had two children late, like in her late 30s or mid 30s. That's what happens. I believe when you have a kid late, it's, it's always, it's always going to be problems. You've been married 15 times and then after the, the 16th time you try to have a kid in your thirties, of course you're going to have problems. This is that's just the way the world works. And then they decided to use a surrogate for the other two that they wanted because they wanted four kids, not two. How do you feel about that? I just want more children. Similarly, her sister during the season two premiere of the Kardashians recently came out and announced that she was having another child, a baby boy this time. So maybe this is an example of she had first, she had a daughter naturally, she wanted a son, and they decided to go the surrogate route uh, with her ex. Presumably she wanted to make sure that both children had the same follow, had the, had the same father. And she said this, she said, obviously it's just really private and I just don't want this to get out right now a tearful Chloe said and during a confessional, because I want to protect my mental well-being as well as the surrogates and all of that. It's just been a lot to go through all at the same time. She's referring to the fact that right after uh, they had implanted the embryo, she found out that Tristan Thompson, who was the father of her children, was cheating on her. Uh, you know, so again, this is a circumstance where we know that Chloe Kardashian is able to get pregnant, but she wanted to use a surrogate because she was on shaky grounds in terms of her relationship with him, but she wanted both of her kids to have the same father. Luxury? How do you feel about that? I, I again, I Witch have crash. no answers here, but I do think that it's important that we discuss this. Here are a few other facts regarding surrogacy that I recently found out and I wanted to share with you. The price in the United States for surrogacy ranges from $110,000 to $170,000 for most families. Yes, you can do things, as I mentioned before, like refinance your home, but the majority, for the majority of people, this is something um, that you do have to have some wealth to be able to afford. There are no federal laws that govern surrogacy. The states make their own rules. Because surrogacy is so expensive in the United States, many couples travel to India, Thailand, or Mexico where the process costs half or even less than half. A 2017 study of 124 gestational surrogates found that newborns who were carried by gestational surrogates had higher rates of preterm birth and low birth weight than the surrogates pre- Better off just going to India or Mexico and having a baby, a relationship with one of those women because most of the time they stay with you. You have a baby. It's crazy to have a baby with someone in when they break up. So what do you do when y'all break up? Is that not your kid for her? Or is that, I don't know how this witchcraft works. Previous births of their own children. That's something that Ali Stuckey had stressed is that people rarely talk about the fact that the bodies of these surrogates are inclined to reject the pregnancy. So they have higher rates of miscarriages, the women that go through and carry somebody else's child. So this is not IVF, but surrogacy and they're more likely to go into preterm labor. How do you feel about that? You know, these, why are these women signing up to do this? Obviously, because they are, they're selling their bodies, obviously, because they need the money. When I was looking at that app of the potential egg donors that I mentioned, all of these women, the majority of them were high school grads, very young, or people that were in university and just needed the money. And they knew that if they went through this process of giving their eggs, they could get $10,000 per an egg something like $10,000 per egg. That's a lot of money uh, for a person that needs it and is in university, something that they're willing to give up so they can have cash. So whether we acknowledge it or not, this is, this is a transaction, right? This is a very serious transaction. They are giving up their bodies for cash. How do we feel about that? I just wanted to have this discussion ultimately because I am learning. I always tell you guys I am in process and I'm a work in, pro in progress. And I think that it's important 
that we are never flippant in our analyses about topics like this. I don't know how I would legislate this. Of course, I can't say, oh, well, you really, if you had to make the law, right? Well, if you really, really, really are trying to have a kid and really need it, you should be able. How do y'all feel about this? Put it in the comments. I don't know. I think it's weird for the woman want to take one to like other egg because you could just get like a loan for ten thousand dollars. Like, I don't know. That sounds weird. sounds like some witchcraft stuff to me. I don't know, man. But I'll be back with another video, y'all. See y'all then.